Hello everybody, my name is Lisa Bayliss Pratt and I'm really privileged to be the Programme Director for the Nursing Now Challenge. I'm really looking forward to the session that we've got coming up over the next hour or so, where we're going to hear from some fantastic examples from lots of different countries about how the Nursing Now Challenge is really making a massive impact to early career nurses and midwives in lots of different places. So I think without further ado, um, I'll hand over now to our first speaker, who, um, who I think is actually, Hannah, who's our first speaker? Who's going to be first? Debbie's going first. Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Over to you, Hi. Debbie, from Bradford and your amazing partnership with Mount Kenya. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. OK, so... Our leadership programme um, is one that's in partnership. It's Bradford District Care Trust in England, and we work with Mount Kenya University. My colleague Elizabeth will be coming in in a moment with, with her slides. Um, and this Nursing Now Challenge gave us an opportunity to develop a bespoke leadership programme for our senior student nurses, but also our early career registrants in the form of an international junior nurse fellowship. We opened up our applications in our respective organisations, and as part of a submission, we asked our learners to detail a little bit about their own leadership styles, but also a research topic that they could develop as a small qualitative research proposal and a conference poster. We don't actually have any formal assessment to our fellowship, but we have a golden thread running through our programme, which is looking at attitude, engagement, reflection, and then a demonstration of knowledge and skill. Next slide, please. Thank you. So by June 2021, we had our first cohort. We had 10 senior nursing students from Mount Kenyon University, two senior nursing students from the University of Bradford in England, and then five early career registrants who are post preceptorship from the Bradford District Care Trust. Two of these are nursing associates and three are registered nurses. And we kept this first cohort very small because we wanted to see how effective the programme was via a virtual platform. We wanted to review our workshop topics and we wanted to make sure that all our learners had time um, to engage and contribute. We're hoping that our next cohort will be larger and we'll probably have to split those into separate groups. And for Bradford District Care Trust, this will be a standard post preceptorship offer moving forward in terms of our recruitment and retention pace. Next slide, please. Thank you. So we launched our 12 month programme in July 2021 with a cross cultural event. And as you can see from the following two slides, we have designated workshops each month which are delivered on a virtual platform with Bradford and Kenyan students coming together to learn, share and discuss. We started with a two day workshop looking at how we use search engines, critique research and format a research proposal. And then we've moved through workshops around the state of the words nursing profiles to consider similarities, differences and challenges in our respective countries. We've also had an overview of the history of research up to the present day, and then two workshops on engaging leadership. Next slide, please. Thank you. In the new year, we moved on to look at resilience, anxiety and grief management. And then last month, we had a session from Elizabeth around academic writing for publication. For the remainder of our programme, we've got exciting workshops around facil facilitating learning in others and then how our learners can contribute to growing their leadership skills as an alumni. Tomorrow, we've got a great day that we're really looking forward to where our participants will be sharing their completed research proposals and working together on critiquing poster presentations to enable them to start to develop their own. Next slide, please. Thank you. This slide is a memory shot of one of our leadership workshops, which really ignited our learners in terms of reflecting on their own leadership styles and the styles of others and how this can impact on outcomes. We looked at self as a leader, styles of leadership, and then managing an organisational change and resilience. Next slide, please. So one key piece of learning that's followed a workshop with our Bradford staff and therapy service was around resilience, stress management and anxiety. It was a safe space where learners were offered the opportunity to share personal circumstances, experiences and coping strategies. However, this session did bring up some very personal struggles, especially with our Kenyan learners, who shared a lot about personal grief and bereavement. So for future cohorts, we will be building in a robust post-workshop offer to enable ongoing support where needed. I'll hand across to Elizabeth now. 
Thank you so much, David. Next slide. So uh, we have our student and our senior nursing uh, staff do their research and uh, the, pres the, the slide here. <laughs> we have our 10 research proposals from our students. All of them are qualitative research. I don't think I won't go through all of them, but I'll pick on two, on two of the uh, research proposals that are very important at this present age. One of them is exploring the gap the theory to practice gap since uh, when we allowed our learners to tell us what uh, issues they've been going through, uh, they all mentioned that they have issues implementing what they've learned in class in practice. So I'm so happy that one of the students is carrying out that research. The other one was on transition issues. Uh, we noted that not many nurses who graduate uh, retained in nursing. So most of them tried to move out of nursing, maybe because of challenges. And one of the issues was transition challenges where uh, as a nursing student, you have uh, lecturers who mentor you, but after that, when you go for your internship or your preceptorship, you're not able to cope. So at least we have a research, one of the students or one of the participants doing that research. Next slide, please. So this is the Bradford group also, a very interesting research topic. Uh, we also wanted to look at community health nursing. So we have uh, Joanne Hadaka looking at community health, uh, what community health nurses can do to prevent pressure also in the community. And uh, also we have um, Penny, Penny looking at uh, mental health nurse, the memory assessment process. So at least we have a mix of research issues that are very important at this present age. And we hope that uh, tomorrow, once they go through the module on uh, publication and also disseminating research, we'll be able to disseminate these in the future uh, webinars. Next slide, please. So we also did something early, I think late December, we wanted to see uh, what our learners have learned for the past six months since we launched the program. And uh, interesting enough, most of them appreciated the program because they said they have learned uh, presentation skills, communication skills, leadership skills, and research skills. So that uh, were the main things for all our learners. Like uh, one of them said that IGNF has been a very important platform uh, for mentorship, and they're so grateful that uh, they are part of the team. So the, 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 the themes here were they've gained knowledge in their presentation skills, communication skills, leadership, and research, which actually is the essence of this program. Next slide, please. Um, we also had one of our participants, that is Paul, present his proposal with the Bradford District uh, Fraternity. And uh, to him, we are so proud uh, because he's already even done his data collection and he's doing his write-up. So we feel so happy because when we started, uh, we, we, didn't know, we didn't know how to go about it. Even for them, they said they didn't know how to go about research. And everyone was like, oh, research, leadership, it's for those people with a lot of experience. But at least right now, when we see them showcasing their skills and their work, what they've done, we, we feel so proud. And we hope we'll also do this come July as we graduate our first cohort. Next slide, please. Uh, we also have great news to share with all of you. We've been trying uh, to enter awards or to get nominated for awards. And we are happy to say that we've been nominated for uh, the Working Together Award, where <coughs> we have been shortlisted. And we hope that with this, we can be able to share more about what we are doing and the role of uh, mentorship in ensuring that we have retention and we have nurses, young nurses and early career nurses who are excited to continue practicing nursing. Next slide, please. 
So apart from what we've been doing for the International Junior Nurse Fellowship, we've actually onboarded our learners and many more on the Vigo Mentoring Platform, where we've given them an opportunity to share or to, to share their experiences and also learn from other nurses at Global Platform. So this one we've not done so much, but we are still continuing working to see how we can support other nurses, other career nurses, including MKU alumni and Bradford district care nurses, come together and share their experiences as nurses. And we hope this will also kick off well. Next slide. So as at IDNF, we empower nurses to flourish. So this is our motto. And flourish is an acronym that we like sharing for any presentation or for any um, webinar or any <coughs> where we are able to share about our motto. Sorry, I don't know. Um, I've been having a cold, but not COVID. Sorry for that. Uh, so for our motto flourish, F stands for foundation. So we believe that the program is a foundation. It's a basis we are giving to all our early career nurses and our student nurses so that they can uh, harness their skills in leadership. And it's also a, an opportunity for them to learn together, to work together as a team, to come up with good research skills and come up with innovations and also write early articles that can guide evidence-based practice. And we are not just doing it for leadership or research alone. We're saying it's a holistic thing. So as much as we, we empower our early career nurses in research, in leadership, we also hope that we can empower them to overcome issues that they may encounter in their practice. And we can empower them to continue working as nurses and to love nursing, and to also encourage other people to continue uh, working as nurses without fear of intimidation, without fear of feeling inferior, uh, believing that together we can do great things. Next slide. So I think that is all. Thank you so much. <laughs> wow, um, thank you so much, Debbie and Elizabeth. It, uh, it always gives me goosebumps. I think um, this amazing collaboration between the two organizations and uh, the two nursing communities is, is just so phenomenally powerful. Um, so yeah, I've got some questions later on, but one for you to have a think about perhaps and for others on the audience is, are you seeing any benefits around retention of early career nurses because of this? Because one of the things that every employer says to me when um, we try and get people to engage in the Nursing Now Challenge as employers is, oh, we're desperate, we need to keep more of our nurses and midwives. So really keen to see if you're um, seeing any of those benefits yet, but uh, ju just amazing, amazing work and always joyous to hear you talk about it. So thank you so much for everything you do. So we're now going to Italy, which is really novel and wonderful to do so. Another, another really enjoyable thing about um, being with this global network. We can go all over the world in an hour or so, which is which is wonderful. So we're going now to um, Dr. Rosanna Zecola, uh, who is going to tell us about what's going on in Italy. So over to you. Yes, hello, thank you very much. And first of all, I'm very proud to be here today. Thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar session. I am proud to be here and I am very proud also to represent my organization. I am Rosanna Zecola, I am a nurse and I actually work in the clinical practice research and development area of our organization. Next slide, please. Uh, previous, thank you. Well, um, how did the Nursing Now Challenge uh, journey start in my organization? ICCT Setelaghi accepted the Nursing Now Challenge back in 2019 with the aim of offering young nurses and midwives under 35 an opportunity to be part of a great global movement to develop their professional roles and leadership skills. There has been a selection process of the candidates and the participants attended a three-day leadership course during which they were stimulated to identify and plan innovative projects that could improve the quality of clinical practice. Next slide, please. 
Uh, these innovative projects, some of them, have been presented during a public event that my organization organized uh, to, in, um, to celebrate the 2020 year of nurse and uh, midwife. Next slide, please. Uh, these are uh, some uh, of the projects the innovative projects that have been presented by uh, the candidates and so just for an example I want to read some of them just to show how uh, innovative they are. For example uh, we have uh, the first one is how to improve adherence to treatment in adolescents with new HIV infections. The aim of this project was uh, to identify the burden careers and implement key approaches and interventions. Then we have another project concerning uh, intensive care. So a look is worth a thousand words. The aim of this project was to develop and implement an unrestricted procedure in order to uh, alleviate stress and anxiety of patients' family. Another project called back using the Fund for Prevention and Reduction of post chemotherapy precise effects in the pediatric population of the Hematology Day Hospital. The aim of this project is uh, to uh, provide education and support to the families, a violation of their stress and anxiety, reassurance to the patients related cancer care, as well as customer uh, satisfaction. Next slide, please. Okay, then uh, we have a project uh, regarding our human milk banking. In our organization, we have a human milk bank. Uh, and uh, the aim of uh, the nurse and the midwife who planned this project was to promote the value of human milk banking among the hospital maternal and child health staff, implement procedures to support the human milk, uh, human, uh, milk bank system. Then we have another project uh, concerning breastfeeding. Three midwives that worked on this project, protecting, promoting, and supporting breastfeeding in facilities, providing maternity and newborn service. The aims of the three midwives was to uh, facilitate staff training with the knowledge and skills necessary to support breastfeeding, and they also have a written breastfeeding policy to be communicated to the healthcare staff. Another um, project, uh, interesting, innovative, think healthily, a prevention model of perinatal depression. The aim is to implement a facility, a midwives training on the thinking positive manual of the World Health Organization. Next uh, slide, please. Just to give you an idea of other three projects, helping patients reduce preoperative pre anxiety in their surgery. Uh, with this uh, project, a nurse's uh, aim was to uh, become attuned to signs of patients' anxiety and implement effective strategies to help patients manage this uh, emotional response. Then uh, scientific evidence in midwifery to support the management of low-risk clinics fully managed by midwives. The aim of this project is to provide midwives opportunity to acquire knowledge and skills to be an active part of evidence-based care. Last example of a um, project that I show you using ultrasound in nursing practice, examine the potential use and benefits of ultrasound to improve nursing practice. And there are the participants involved in the Nursing Out Challenge who presented a, a very interesting projects, but due to the time, I didn't want to present them all. Next slide, please. Well, we did have Im limited implementation of the projects due to the COVID restriction. Our uh, region, Lombardy, has been uh, strongly uh, involved in the COVID pandemic. But uh, the good aspect of the National Challenge is that these projects have demonstrated the practical application of what the participants have learned from leadership programs. Uh, next slide, please. So how are we going to upcome uh, the Nursing Now Challenge programs in our uh, organization? Well, we want to catch up, catch up with the participants, the, pre uh, the previous participants. Uh, we are organizing a course to update uh, the project's feasibility. Then we are going to schedule regular monthly meetings in order to share the Nursing Now Challenge resources and challenges among the health professionals. 
We are foreseeing to enroll other health professionals in the Nursing Our Challenge journey because very many innovative projects are coming up involving our healthcare professionals. And then we want to share regular updates about the progress of Nursing Our Challenge programs in ICCT Setelagi. Next slide, please. Um, what is the experience gained through the Nursing Our Challenge? Uh, um, the participants uh, through the training experience gained through Nursing Out Challenge event uh, has allowed them to gain a greater awareness of their, their professional and personal resources in order to, to understand their role as professional. They really felt the responsibility to implement initiatives that can promote the improvement of health and global health care. And they believe that the moment of training and inflection that have characterized this experience have been crucial to achieving this objective. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, through the experience, uh, the participants had had the opportunity uh, to acquire new competences, knowledges and skills, uh, which uh, have inspired them to be protagonists uh, in their own working environment. Uh, have motivated them to propose new innovative projects aimed at improving the quality of care and encouraged them to engage and work in synergy with other health professionals to achieve their goals. Uh, next uh, and last uh, slide, please. Uh, so what is the best practice and lessons learned from this uh, Nursing Now uh, challenge journey? Uh, first of all, that it's important to keep, keep the focus on training that nurses and midwives are indeed important agents of change. We have to start try trying because who said can't? Someone is always doing something, someone else said that it was impossible. Then we have two statements from Florence Nightingale, never let us consider ourselves finished nurses. We must be learning all of our lives. And I think that the, uh, the feelings uh, uh, should, uh, oh, sorry, I can't read it. I'll have to read it on my note. It's very written small. Um, I think one's feelings waste themselves in words. They ought to all be distilled into actions which bring results. So what we really learned, uh, thanks to, uh, is that evidence-based projects allow healthcare professionals working within an interdisciplinary team to identify, issue, and implement best practice in interventions that can result in true improvements and patients' care. A last consideration, uh, I would like to underline that in our organization, in the research area where I work, there is a continuous research and use of guides, allied guides, uh, to establish standard operating procedures to implement evidence-based based and best practice in patients' care. Thank you for your kind attention. Oh, Rosanna, thank you so much. What a superb presentation. And your English is fantastic. I, I wish my Italian was a, a fraction bit as good as that, but just- Whenever to... you want. <laughs> <laughs> but but and we are looking to be much more um, diverse with, with, with our languages too. And we, we're gonna work on how we have um, webinars in different languages. So we might be calling on you, Rosanna, in the future to, to do it. Italian one for us, but I mean, that was fantastic. And, and you know, the fact that these early career nurses and midwives are continuing that evidence-based journey, we've fed them so much wonderful information and taught them yes. so many things as undergraduates, then sometimes they go into practice and they don't get the chance to continue that journey. So uh, what you're doing, I think, is phenomenal, applying it to the evidence-based research projects and I think Aisha my lovely colleague Aisha popped it in the box so, you know it it is amazing what nurses do and when you just flashed up that those those projects they they're just game changing to population health to universal health coverage and have such powerful impact you just want I think as Aisha said you, know, you want the world just to see what nurses and midwives do because if we probably went and asked you know, influencers uh, of the budgets that aren't nurses, they wouldn't come up with those things. And yet they are critical to um, helping improve the lives of others. Um, so thank you so much, Rosanna. And I love the Florence Nightingale quotes. And I, a question maybe for you to think about for later. And 
I just sit here pondering, do you think we could have done better if we hadn't have had COVID? Or do you think COVID has, has turbocharged the Nursing Now Challenge? Because I just struggle to think how much more we would have done without COVID, even though COVID has been so awful and frustrating and tiring and all those horrible things. But it's almost in spite of COVID, it feels to me that this whole initiative as, as almost flourished as a as a byproduct of it, perhaps. But again, one for you to, I wonder, give some thought to, and, and I'd really be keen to get uh, your your feedback on that when we do the Q and A. Thanks again, right. Rosanna. It's okay. really really wonderful. Thank you. And thank you, and thank you even to all my colleagues that worked on this project as well. Thank Absolutely you. amazing, amazing change agents, as I saw on one of the slides. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So we're now going to another amazingly influential um, nurse that I've known for some while, which is our, our lovely Judy Caniola, who actually has been leading the uh, a Nursing Now Challenge Fellowship Programme. And uh, Judy is no less than a chair of the Centre for Nursing and Midwifery at the University of Global Health Equity. So Judy, over to you. Thank you so much, Professor Lisa. Um, and really, I echo your sentiments. I really love our Nursing Now webinars because it allows us to go around the world in one hour. It's wonderful to see the length and breadth of participants from Trinidad and Tobago mm -hmm. to the Philippines, to India, to Nigeria. Really, I feel so heartened um, when I see this because still, despite it all, I think nurses and midwives, we are the the engine that drives um, healthcare in, you know, in whichever way, shape and form. So I will start uh, and give a quick brief around our Nursing Now Challenge Fellowship Program that just started. Uh, I feel so privileged and honored to just be able to deliver this program uh, through my university here in Rwanda and really to contribute a little bit uh, to the strengthening of the nursing and midwifery workforce, which as you allude to correctly, Professor Lisa, in this time of COVID and I think beyond is so uh, sorely needed. So we are calling this program Emerging Nurses Leadership Program and it's being um, delivered by UGHE, which is my university, the University of Global Health Equity. And UGHE really is a little bit, I think giving you why the, the, the difference will come is that we're really looking at the delivery of health sciences education differently from the traditional one that has been um, looking at issues of equity and social justice that if you really take time and read through have brought us many times to a lot of the weaknesses we face now and we are looking at really just shifting away from that and really being able to impact because we understand some of the historical injustices, the inequities that we all face, et cetera, et cetera, that have led to a I want to say a deficit in the way we teach the health professions. And then of course, Ubora. Ubora is a Swahili word that means good. Uh, this is the um, Institute, Ubora Institute in Ghana that really focuses on quality improvement. So together, Ubora and UGHE, we are delivering this um, Nursing Now Challenge Leadership Program. We have participants from six, eight countries, six countries in Africa who are Ghana, Sierra Leone, Somaliland, Tanzania, Uganda, and Zambia, and two from Asia who are Bangladesh and Nepal. And for me already, this is just like to me a testament of success that um, we are cross-pollinating and fertilizing across the different um, regions of the world. Uh, the program structured very quickly. It's in six parts over nine months. We have part one, which is looking at the nursing leadership foundational concept. We already did this five days. It was synchronous online. Then now, right now, we're actually doing the QI, the quality improvement foundational concept. And this is done 
two days a week on Monday and Friday, uh, bi-weekly 120 minutes. Again, it's online synchronous, and then they also have group discussions. Then we'll move on to the leadership application and quality improvement proficiency. So sort of just building up from the foundation and moving up. This will happen for five days in May. Then again, <clears throat> adding on the bit on the QI proficiency over seven weeks from June to July. And then they will have four weeks where they're going to actually implement their projects of you know, doing independent work with support from coaches in August through to September. And then in September, we're sort of going to have our graduation where we are saying we are presenting to the world the nursing and midwifery leaders. So that's sort of just quick snapshot of the structure of our program. The content is quite uh, straightforward, if I may say, uh, we have nursing leadership content and QI content. And under nursing leadership, we have three modules spread out where we are looking first at leading self. For me, it's important, particularly here in Africa, I think, where nurses often feel subservient and have been placed through various historical, colonial, racist reasons that, you know, patriarchal even, nurses are sort of handmaidens to the doctor, you're a nurse, you're a woman, so you're subservient to a man, you're less clever. We come through a history of colonialism, which puts our African countries and even countries in Asia in a position of always being recipients and really being seen as we can't think for ourselves, we can't do for ourselves. So for me, a lot of the content and the leading self is really just breaking a lot of those um, things and looking at authentic leadership and helping the students to understand that they lead wherever they are. Module two is looking at leading change and then module three uh, going out and looking at leading systems which often nurses feel that well can I really make a difference and we are telling them yes you can from the personal through to the system level and then the QI modules are looking at the science of improvement quality management measurement for improvement testing and implementing changes and then at the end presenting and you can see that these are harmonious in terms of when you look at testing and implementing changes from the leadership perspective we're already telling them as nurses you must know that you're going to lead change particularly in this volatile unpredictable world that we currently live in when we look at for example presenting their project data it's really looking at self it's looking at systems and so the two of them are actually uh, in uh, working in tandem I think for me, the promising practice that we can scale up or replicate right here, and I think Lisa, uh, to jump in and maybe say, did COVID, was it a blessing or a curse? I think it, it, it was a blessing in the sense that even for us in low and middle income countries, the online mode of delivery uh, training or education has been very effective. And often as Africans, sometimes they think, oh, we don't, we, we can't do this, but clearly we can. Uh, most of, in fact, Africa is one of the leading emerging, I think the leading emerging uh, economic uh, um, continent right now in terms of things like digital and, and, uh, and um, online uh, things. So despite challenges I know we face in Africa, this has been a very effective, it is much cheaper than bringing in people across the oceans. It allows for that multi-country trans transcontinental participation. Actually, it was really great to see the Bangladesh students, you know, really speaking with the Somaliland, for example, and understanding and sharing. So for me, I think this uh, online mode of delivery really is something we should work on to strengthen, replicate, and scale up, particularly across the countries, not so much nationally within the borders of each country. But when we look at a model of saying, can we teach nurses across the world? Yes, we can. Some of the lessons we've learned, um, the use of two institutions who are experts, sorry, this is really a typo in their field, allows for the best from both worlds. So sort of UGHE from the academic bent and then Ubora with its, its real focus on the science of QI um, allows the students to get the best. This multi-country um, LMIC involvement 
to me, I always say we are more similar than we are different. And the problems in nursing and midwifery across the world, I think, are the same. The solutions are context specific. So allowing for this sort of cross-pollination really um, shows the students, one, that they are not like unique in the challenges that they face and that you know, everything that we suffer is common to all as the saying goes. And so then they're able to then develop solutions based on their own context, on the challenges they face if it's Tanzania or Uganda or Ghana or Sierra Leone or Nepal, but knowing that the challenges are broadly are the same. The projects being implemented are varied there by allowing students to see what different places are doing. So Ghana is seeing, you know, what, what Zambia is doing or, what Somaliland is doing. They don't have to reinvent the wheel if they, they know that if somebody's doing something around wound care, I don't really have to do the same thing. Can we learn? Can we share the, the, the scripts? Can we share the, the materials? Can we share the, 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 the screening tools? Can we share the information? And then of course, when they see the lessons that others are you know, learning, they can also do the same and implement them in their own particular context. This program, of course, from a scientific, or can I say from an academic point is adding evidence to the nursing and midwifery body of knowledge in terms of teaching and learning. So like I said, how does this online mod model work? How, how can we say that it's successful and when we can then demonstrate this success, it means others can do this, scale up and even replicate. At the end of the day, like I keep saying, it's breaking down a lot of, for us in LMICs, the colonial gender, you know, nurses are women. In fact, my class has, is made up of so many men. We are all of us understanding our history and the colonial, what can I say, the colonial effect, if I can call it that, the geographic barriers, the professional barriers, and all of these have been wonderful lessons to see with the students, even in this short time that we've been implementing this program. Just a quick examples of the student projects. Uh, you can see they range from the you know, really clinical, so ECG abnormalities and how to treat, signs and symptoms of stroke. Again, I apologize for the typo. Uh, introduction of a diabetes screening at a health center, for example, which often people think that screening of NCDs should happen at higher levels. And we are saying, no, this can happen at the lower levels, at the health center three levels in countries like Uganda. Uh, strengthening and advocating, wow, so many typos, Judy. Um, for the midwifery workforce, this is being done very, very well, I must say, really exemplary by the team from Bangladesh and embedding a TOT model for hospital nurses where they have ongoing learning. Again, this is being done by the team from Tanzania. There are many more, but I just thought it's good for you to sort of see the gamut of the different projects from both clinical where nursing really squarely sits to a more of a systemic or a strengthening um, uh, um, overarching uh, place. It's just a screenshot of our first class and you can see our team from Bangladesh, Gaonima, we have our team from Somaliland, Hussein, we have Valeria from Tanzania, Rita from Ghana, um, you know, Nabugwere Robina from Uganda. So really just um, to show you that this, this work has been working and we are very excited to continue with it. Thank you very much. Wow, Judy, thank you so very much. And I think, uh, so many things really, but I think you're right. I think COVID has made digital possible and it's made global accessible in ways that it never was before. Um, but I also love, you know, the breaking down of boundaries that you've articulated and just looking at that screenshot with those people from the different countries all coming together to connect and engage and learn from and with each other. I mean, you know, those of us that have been around nurse education for a while, how often have we tried to nail into professional education and get people learning together? But how tricky is it often when you've got people that you sort of recruit into almost their own silo at the very beginning? But, you know, this is breaking boundaries. And, and we've done a really interesting piece of work 
here at Coventry with some Somaliland midwives. And we've now got buddying relationships between the academics in Somaliland and the academics at the university. I don't think this would have happened if we hadn't have stepped into the digital agenda the way we have because of COVID. Um, so just, just absolutely wonderful. And again, a question for you perhaps to have a think about is, What's next, Judy? How much more of the world are you going to cover with the? Because it, it and and you know, I think that notion of uh, uh, the global nursing now challenge cohort is really fascinating um, at at different levels. So really keen to hear more about that. And now we go over to um, a, a long-standing, a really brilliant colleague of mine that's supported me in so many ways over the years. Um, so over to you, Professor Aisha, to hear about what's been going on in, uh, in Edinburgh. I'm going to unmute myself. Um, thank you, Lisa. Oh, well, wow, I'm, I'm feeling energized. I feel like I want to um, head outside and I don't know, do something, run around and tell everyone they should come and listen to these webinars. It's, it's amazing. And um, I mean, I've been typing away and there's some tweets going on there. So I, outstanding work and really a great opportunity for me to hear about lots of other things going on. It's, it's great to take a break off the the wheel that you keep going on every day and come into these webinars and just realize it is worth it when you're in your little bubble um, that we are making a difference and we are making changes and it's just phenomenal so um, I'm just in awe of everyone who's spoken and I think my little bit at the end hopefully will just round it off nicely with a trip down memory lane um, I think, and trying to think about where this all started and came from. And um, I think what, what we can feel, my reflections of our work we're doing in developing the programme in Edinburgh is that sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming. Um, and even when we, let, we listen to these presentations, it's like, wow, how can we ever replicate this or how can we ever do this? And this is what I found in my experience, our students feel like when we present um, permission to, to nurses and to our student nurses and say, okay, this is what you can do. This is what is possible. And when we give them these amazing examples, they can feel overwhelmed by it. And I, I think we have to just recognize that and think how can we make this for them achievable and possible? And that's really what we focused on here in Edinburgh. We've just started um, our leadership development program and I really hope we can be as successful as, um, Judy and um, Rosanna and Debbie, et cetera, who have, who have spoken earlier because um, that, that's the hope. So I might be coming to them for some tips. Um, here at Edinburgh, um, similarly, we're a university and we were so pleased when we were able to join the Nursing Now Challenge because I know Lisa and I, who've worked together um, for, a, for a few years now, where we could really see that in a way, it was too late to wait till these nurses were out there in practice. We had to get these um, individuals early and get them straight away as soon as they were coming into the educational setting and try and from that point explore and open the world of what nursing could possibly be and what their role was in it. So, um, and, and I'm lucky that we were able to build on a lot of the resources. And I think for anybody who's dialing in today, I think one of the key messages that I really want to, um, to put out there is that there is a lot of resources and support that already exists. You don't have to start from scratch. And I know Judy was just saying that we're, we're not replicating, we can utilize resources. And there is some things already there and that's what we're trying to do. So if we can move to the next slide, I just wanted to let you know and give you, mine is a very brief overview and please get in touch with me and ask me in the Q&A about detail, but it's just a bit of an overview. And I, I see us have, as ex having experienced the step change in nursing and probably for two reasons. One was the Nursing Now campaign. I'm um, doing a little plug for that, that um, Hannah and Lisa and I worked on, and many of you who are in the call, I know Elizabeth's in today, etc. But also, 
um, the pandemic. And I think you're right, Lisa. Um, I think that has had that a catalytic effect as much as we thought it might um, not do that. And I think we now have a new generation of nurses. And I've put a little picture in there of um, this generation who came with us to um, Geneva, to the World Health Assembly. Louisa and I were lucky enough to be there with Ted Ross. And I, for me, uh, that's what I hope our contribution will be to support the next generation of nurses. And I think the Nursing Now Challenge offers that opportunity for employers, for people in education, people in practice who really want to um, give them that lift um, and lift them up. So in Edinburgh, we are currently looking at our programmes, um, largely our undergraduate programme and our postgraduate top programme. So students coming in for the first time from school largely, and we also have a new programme, which is a graduate entry into nursing, a two year programme. And then we have those coming back to do their masters. For us in Edinburgh, that's largely an international cohort. So those are the programmes that we've been looking at at the minute and seeing if we can map across all our programmes this idea of leadership development, but not a standalone, which is, I think, what we've kind of done before. We've just kind of had a course and we've just popped it in somewhere and then we've talked about it in isolation. And in Edinburgh, we've used the Nursing Now campaign really as the, the hub and the core um, text, but it's a case study actually. And from that, we've built outwards into our programmes. So we're mapping across undergraduate programme year one to four, we have a four year programme. And then in our master's programme, we have a whole course that is focused on leadership, but specifically around political leadership and influencing. So hopefully quite high level, but again, I think we need to get nurses early in their career to help them understand how they can lead themselves to influence and operate at that, that strategic level. So currently um, we have in our first year, we have a course that is named What is Nursing? And that used to very traditionally be tell us about Florence and tell us about um, what you think nursing is. And, and um, it was all very traditional. And what we've done is really turned that on its head and really thought about the new generation. What does that look like now? Nurses leading services, leading um, in so many different ways and settings. And we've used case studies from the campaign and the campaign itself. So that resource already exists in the final report and the legacy, which is the Nursing Now Challenge. So the students get to undertake some um, reading and we use some of Nigel Crisp's um, papers and some of Jill White's papers and some of Barbara Stilwell's papers, papers that were produced as a preamble to the Nursing Now campaign and during it for them to engage with the debate that is going on globally around nursing. So they understand what is happening with their profession. So whilst this is about leading yourself, it's about leading yourself as part of this bigger movement of nurses. And we're building on that momentum that was gained from the Nightingale Challenge. So we do that and it's really interesting. It's, it's a, a couple of hours session, um, it's a one hour direct lecture and then there's pre and post work going on and we I get them to critique and challenge what we, they think about nursing and challenge what society thinks and our health ministers, our governments, the public and how we can change that perception. And what's very interesting, the feedback that I receive constantly after doing this course, I should have put some of the quotes in, is that th these are first year, so they've been in for one semester, so a few months, they said, I didn't realize this is what nursing could be. And that I think is a very key message for us to hear. So we really need to take a look at what society thinks nurses are and what we think nurses are. And when I hear all these stories today, this is what we need to get out there. This is what young people need to understand and more mature people. We want lots of people coming into nursing with many skills. This is what we need. They are the new generation, the new nursing. So we do that in year one, and then we're building that integrated into the curriculum all the way through. And currently 
it sounds a bit odd. I've done year one and year four, and I now need to work out what's going in the middle. So, um, but it's a work in progress. Um, I'm more than happy to talk about um, what we do with that and share the resources, etc. But they do exist. Um, and then where we've really, really put a lot of effort in, in is to our master's programme. And currently on that programme, we have a cohort of 43. The majority are from China, are from the UK, um, Indonesia, the Philippines, Taiwan, Saudi Arabia, America this year. And we don't have any from Canada. Usually we do other areas in Europe, sometimes Turkey, Greece, Italy. Um, we have students from across the globe. And that is a whole programme looking at um, developing your political leadership with the idea of influencing global health policy. So it runs for 10 weeks, the programme, and is uh, consists of lectures and then tutorials following the lecture so we can really delve down. And similar to a lot of the content we've seen, um, but the focus really for this one is a lot on the individual and how you as an individual need to understand who you are, your identity as a nurse, your identity as a woman often, um, and really understand if you are to influence, if you are to raise your voice, if you are to sit at that table of influence, if you are to speak to your health minister and have that opportunity or write a paper about it, how are you able to carry yourself in those meetings, in those opportunities where our nurses here, as you see the new generation, how did they do that when they went to the World Health Assembly? How did they go up to their minister and tell them the value and their worth? So we have to do a lot of, I guess, support development. And this is not just going to happen in 10 weeks. This is a whole cultural shift, a paradigm shift that needs to happen in education with our curricula. Um, if we can just move on um, to the next slide. Um, yeah, and I'm, I'm going to kind of just bring that to, to where we are now. So these are two hugely influential people that were are really probably part of the reason we're here today, um, Nigel and Sheila, and they were the game changers. And the legacy that we are seeing is the Nursing Now Challenge, but also the legacy we're seeing is all the work that you are doing. So in the leadership programme we run, we actually have what's called virtual internships where we identify or I identify different organizations. So it's the World Health Organization, ICN, um, it's Workforce, Human Resources um, for Health, and non-nurses as well. People who hold positions of influence across the stakeholder group, and they come in and they discuss it um, with the students. And last week we had um, a colleague in and their homework before the session was, here is the World Health Organization strategy document with the recommendations made at the last WHA. Imagine yourself as the chief nurse for your country identify out of the list of, I think there were 40 recommendations, the three top priorities for your country. Tell us how you're going to make sure that's implemented and tell us who you are going to engage with to ensure that it happens. And those are the skills and that's the conversation we need to be also happening, um, having with our um, future nurses. Mm -hmm. And this was something that we saw um, uh, Lisa and I learned so much from Sheila and Nigel running that campaign and understanding what it was to give student nurses who had never even thought of this before um, the opportunity to think I can do this, I can be part of the change and being part of this not in isolation so my students are here but I'm getting them all to join the Nursing Now Challenge so that they can have this network so they can have the reach so they can get in touch with Judah, Judy in Ghana or Nepal or Philippines or wherever so they can get in touch with someone in Italy so they can get in touch with someone in Coventry if they're from the UK this is what we're doing now creating this network that is absolutely fundamental for us to build the the critical mass with the critical skills, with the critical experience and the support that they require. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's all I really want to say. I don't know, is there one last slide? <laughs> I think there is. Yes. So what's next? So I'm, I'm 
Jill White, who's actually coming to meet the students, um, she and I are really thinking about this in a bigger way. So not just the nursing curriculum, this is about the sustainable development goals, planetary health. And we are actually mapping now the competencies that we think are required for this so that we can create a global nursing curricula that can be a template that can be used by anybody in the world and they can use it as a template and populate it so it's culturally relevant for their area and take it forward and it will be free for use. So that's where we're going next. Thank you so much for your time and uh, thank you for having me. Oh, Aisha, thank you so very much. And it's really exciting, the fact that we've stepped into the students, actually, because we started with the early career nurses, but getting in earlier and getting our students to think global, to be enabled to act global, and also to show them the wealth of opportunities there are out there and uh, to seize every moment. It's just so powerful. And and, and I think, you know, we when, we when many of us perhaps trained, we never got that even thought process offered up to us. It was like, are you clinically competent? Have you got your skills book signed? You know, you haven't been late more than once, have you? And, you know, your hair isn't touching your collar, is it? And if it is, put it up, you know. I mean, this was some of probably people are nodding our experiences, but it's so good to see that we've shifted so much from that. But I'm really grateful, Aisha, for everything that you do and have done and support supported the you know the campaign you've undersold yourself because from sort of the the final report there's loads of brilliant stuff in that report agents have changed the data what we learned through a global campaign the whole of ability to reach these days has shifted massively and I just love the work you're going to do with Jill it's going to be fantastic because let's hope we can influence the regulators and let's hope we can enable migration of our nurses to happen much more seamlessly um, and that they're mutually respected everywhere they go as opposed to oh you'll have to have an OSCE here do this assessment here sit this test you know how can we get over some of those barriers to enable our nursing workforce to be truly globally mobile because they're an asset to the world if we can mobilize them so really excited for the next steps on that and as ever thanks so much Aisha truly appreciate it and now we go to another brilliant colleague of mine as you all are and that's um lovely Laura Stramidlow who works here at Coventry and 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 is heading up our, our nursing now challenge program and uh looking forward to hearing from you Laura so the floor is yours thank you very much Lisa and um this is a, the best wonderful two hours of my week probably year for sure um so thank you for inviting us here and alongside my colleague Sam who I'm going to introduce shortly we would like to share with you our vision for leadership in, in actually it's not just pre-registration nurse training it is the whole of the, the healthcare professions that are taught here at Coventry University. Um, over the last couple of curricula over the past sort of 10 years actually we've had a vision collectively that all of the healthcare professionals should be able to building on a lot of what Aisha has already said lead and manage self through the art and power of communication uh, moving into their sort of second years of their courses, they should all be leading and coaching their peers um, onwards through the power of collaboration. And then this is where this module that Sam's about to talk about comes in, is that they will all have a leadership management module that is interprofessional that teaches them how to or opens up their eyes to how to lead teams and services and be those navigators and influence people. So it's a thread that runs through much as Aisha was describing, although I picked up a couple of top tips from Aisha there. It's not plagiarism, it's sharing. Absolutely. So we have, we obviously we all have to embed our professional standards and our Nursing Midwifery Council has a whole platform now on uh, sort of leadership management and how nurses of the 21st century need to move on in that sphere. We've seen fantastic examples of that here. Obviously the WHO uh, global strategic direction needed to be key and brought in for all of the healthcare professions and of course for nursing, the Nursing Now campaign, but that's not to say that we can't share that with other professions and again um, almost up the ante with the power of nursing to work interprofessionally so that everybody values nurses everywhere and I'm now going to hand over to my colleague Sam who as you can see is an OT and very proud to stand with her today. Thank you Sam. 
Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And thank you, everybody, for, for letting me join you. Some really inspirational speakers. And, and I'm certainly taking a lot from today as well. And, and there's a couple of things that really stood out to me. And I think hopefully by looking at the course that we offer at Coventry for our final year students allows that thinking to continue. One thing that stands out is Judy mentioned that we're more similar than we are different. And I think that's a real key point across this interprofessional leadership module. So um, can I have the next slide, please? So ours is a cross speciality module. Um, it's our first year of, of running it this academic year. So the new design, new module. And so far, um, we've had all branches of, of nursing join us, including our nurses that are based on our Scarborough campus. Um, we have currently have occupational therapy students and physiotherapy students as well, having covered the module. And then next year, we will also include colleagues and students from paramedics and paramedic science, dietetics and midwifery students as well. So, so far, um, if I can have the next slide, we're, we're looking, we've, we've had around 600 students on the module. We expect that to at least double next year. And then we've got our final um, third year of running the module. We'll have hopefully then by then all of our health um, professional students from across our final year undergraduate courses, including um, apprentices as well on the module. So the, the numbers blow my mind a little bit, um, thinking about where we will be in sort of three years time. I'm not gonna go into any great depth. You can see the learning outcomes here. It's uh, the module very much at its heart. It's about bringing leadership and management behaviors and skills across our health professionals. It's giving our students opportunity to think about how they can be involved in quality improvement from day dot. They don't have to wait to be in a leadership role in a certain band or a certain grade of staff that they have skills and ability to take with them from their undergraduate learning through to practice. We've got a very exciting part of the module where we use a simulated environment to develop leadership and management skills. And I'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a, in a little while. And throughout it, we're asking students to critically reflect on their own sort of leadership and management issues that they've experienced whilst out in clinical placement and their, and, and their working environments as well. Many of our students work as, as well alongside their studies. So it's bringing in um, all of that into their learning from the module. Next slide, please. The module's delivered. It's a, it's a web-based module. It's completely online. Um, and it's developed, it's taught over uh, seven weeks with an expectation for students to do pre-seminar work in preparation and post-seminar work in which they reflect on, on what they've learned that week. And you can see from the, the content, we cover not only sort of leadership theories, we look at strategic planning, um, starting to think about policy, power, politics, all those things that influence our practice as healthcare professionals. We look at change theory and quality improvement. We've already talked in some of the sessions about, you know, in, encouraging our, our newly qualified staff to be agents of change. And that's a real key theme throughout the module. We talk about very real day-to-day -day things that impact our practice as well. Things like risk management, whistleblowing. We learnt an awful lot locally and within the UK from the Staffordshire inquiry. We take a lot of that learning to encourage our students to be aware of that from the start of their careers. We look at the application of communication skills, things like delegation, working with conflict. So all very clear skills development throughout the, the module. Next slide, please. But we also have a few aspects of the module that, that I am going to talk about in a little bit more detail that we're really proud of as well, which we think adds to that. And I think from, from hearing some of the speakers today, if you don't mind, I might be in touch with you um, to ask you if you wouldn't mind us interviewing you. So in, in our module to support the materials, we've developed some of our own materials. We wanted it to be very inspirational and very aspirational for our students. And by doing that, we've interviewed a number of colleagues 
from all professional groups. So we've tried to be representative, not only from across the nursing disciplines, but also within allied health professionals and from all grades of, of staff as well. So from our newly qualified practitioners through to, you know, directors and, you know, leads in their professions and asked about their experiences and asked them to share their experiences of leadership and management throughout their careers so far to support the materials that we're providing uh, throughout the module. We've created, we've tried to create um, materials that are good to look at and are intriguing and students want to watch and use and read and take their reading further. And we've done that by using things like Adobe Sparks, and also we've created a reflection section. You know, we really want our, our newly qualified practitioners to be reflective practitioners, to be able to think about how they're influencing practice, how they're influencing patient care and providing the best patient care we possibly can. And just going back to our simulated activity, we do have a simulated multidisciplinary team meeting, which we ask the students to observe and observe different behaviours, shall we say, within the team meeting. Not all of them are, are positive behaviours, so we need to learn from that. But we've tried to make it a very realistic, simulated meeting that, that many of us have experienced, I'm sure, within our careers, and how we can learn from those behaviours and use that within, within our learning. Um, next slide, please. We have two assessments. Again, we've tried to make these very much real world based. So our first assessment is a um, presentation. It's a group presentation upon a chosen scenario, scenario from practice that we want the students to influence change. We want them to bring in the theory. We wanted them to bring in their knowledge and look at how they may use the knowledge that they have to develop a service, to influence change, to improve patient care, um, and we've chosen a number of scenarios from, from practice to, for students to choose from. Our second assessment within this module is very much, we wanted a tool that students not only would meet the needs for their sort of undergraduate you know, um, process, but also that something they could take into practice. And so from that, we've developed a personal leadership and management portfolio so we've used the, the pillars, the, the, the leadership processes within our professional bodies and used that and learned from that so that the students can apply their learning, their reflection from the simulated activity, their reflection on experiences of delegation and their planning their own sort of professional goals to take forward with them into practice for their future selves so that they have a very real piece of work that they can take with them into their first jobs and have that that sort of first preceptorship year that their plan in terms of leadership to take with them and take forward as newly qualified practitioners. So those are the two assessments that we've developed. Next slide, please. Student numbers, as I say at the moment, our first cohort was across all um, nursing cohorts apart from one adult nursing cohort that's with us in the, the January run of the module. And there were 256 students from September to January. This year, we've got a, this, this term from January, um, we've currently got around 300 students on the module from across adult nursing, occupational therapy and physiotherapy. And as I, as I said before, you know, our numbers will only increase as the whole of the, the, the school um, joins us and cohorts from across all the disciplines, which is really exciting. I believe we've got six different allied health professional disciplines, uh, uh, as well as all our nursing cohorts as well. Next slide, please. So just wanted to, to finish by just, um, we asked our students, we, we evaluate our, our modules um, and we asked our students what they thought of the module. Uh, this was the first run of the module in September. And you can see from the response rate, we had you know, 80, nearly 80% 80 of students felt that the module, they were satisfied with the quality of the module that we, we developed. Next slide, please. And 
most importantly, and it was always our intention, you know, we wanted to give them something real that they can take into practice with them that will give them opportunities. And again, we were really, really pleased to see that again, you know, 80% of students felt that the module had provided me with opportunities to apply what they'd learned in practice. And next slide, please. And just to find like this is some of the feedback that we'd had, things that students felt were good at, about the module. And it, and it was very much about the skills ready for qualifying for their first post. Next slide, please. And I just wanted to finish off. So Megan is one of our nursing students that was with us um, from September to January in the module. And I just wanted to share some of the feedback that she gave us. Um, and I'll just read it from the slide if I, if I may. Uh, Since completing this module, I've become much more mindful of the skills I currently have and the skills I need to develop. The module has made me aware of the current leadership skills I do have, which I didn't know, and has given me the push and the confidence to take opportunities that I would previously avoided, such as expressing my thoughts and feelings in conflict. Previously to completing the module, I did not consider the need for leadership and management skills as a newly registered staff nurse, as I considered this was a more senior nurse's role and the management team. Further to this, the module has taught me the importance for these skills as a student and a newly qualified nurse. So it's bringing that we don't have to wait, that we have all this lovely knowledge and enthusiasm and opportunity to take forward into our first practice. And I think by working collaboratively across the disciplines, we're setting that in stone as well, that, that you know, whilst we are unique, there's also a lot of similarity between us mm -hmm. and together or is it together we can be stronger and and take our services forward not only for our professions but also and most importantly for the the patients and the people that we serve so that's a very very quick whistle stop tour of of our, our leadership and, and management module here at coventry um thank you for listening mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Thank you so much, Laura and Sam. It's brilliant. And the student feedback, I think, is, uh, did I see Aisha say it's diamond? It really is, <laughs> isn't it? So, so, so wonderful. And it goes to show that, you know, if we don't um, give the students these opportunities, they think it is somebody else's thing, leadership, but even in today's era where you might think it, it has shifted. I mean, I'm really excited to see where the interdisciplinary agenda goes with the nurses in our challenge, because we had nurses and midwives, obviously, you know, in different countries, sometimes they're nurses, sometimes they're midwives, sometimes they're both. So we've always had nurses and midwifery in this mix. But I do know we've had conversations about other professionals. And, and for me, you know, to support the respect of nursing and midwifery and their role within the interdisciplinary team, I think it's just fantastic when they join with other professions and it will be just interesting to see how that flows and where the sweet spots are whether they're around sustainable development goals or universal health coverage or uh, you know the political agenda around global health it will be interesting to see where the touch points of, of greatest synergies are with the different professions but hats off to you because I think you know we're so good at working with ourselves, talking to ourselves, and actually by, by sharing it with other disciplines and, and doing that, it's going to be really exciting to see what journey that takes us on with this, with this really, um, well, it's just a fascinating agenda, isn't it? I mean, here we are as educators, academics, uh, you know, we're sharing and learning from each other about how we do this, and uh, this wouldn't have happened, we wouldn't be talking to each other in this way without it, so it just keeps giving. I just think the Nursing Now Challenge just keeps giving because of you and the people that become part of it. So um, thank you so very much. I'm really mindful of time. Uh, there's one question in the chat box that's been posed is about whether we're actively working with Sigma, Theta Tau, and the answer to that is absolutely yes. And we've recently done a, a um, global solution initiative with them. So we do, and they're, they're one of the people that we partner with most definitely. Um, but I think, has anybody got a question, you know, from the panel that they'd like to ask another member? Because I think there's lots of curiosity in a little community of practice that probably has been struck up with this, um, this panel this afternoon. But has anybody got a burning question that they want to pose to anybody? Um, perhaps while you're thinking about that, I'd like to...
come back to, to Rosanna and Debbie and just, I mean, Rosanna, for you, uh, do you think you'd have done much different if you hadn't have had the pandemic with what you've designed? Because I was, I was I just very taken with how you took the research project and got the early career nurses involved. Uh, was that was that linked to the pandemic or just the way you'd have done it anyway? Um, I, I have some problems with the audio. I'll try to answer because I didn't hear well. Um, I think that the pandemic, uh, um, COVID pandemic, uh, gave unfortunately, but luckily, an opportunity for the health professionals uh, to be visible. So uh, we gained visibility that we do deserve. Uh, but uh, in our organization, um, we have a nurse director, uh, Dr. Patrizia Tomazine, that she is really focused on uh, providing uh, the best care uh, for the patients. Uh, so um, she is strongly focused on helping the healthcare professionals provide the best of care and improve their satisfaction. This is the reason for why we have a research area and that we uh, are always searching for guidelines and best practice mm -hmm. because then we transform best practice in these guidelines uh, in uh, uh, operating pr procedures. Uh, and we work together along with the, uh, closely with the staff. Uh, and uh, there is uh, Dr. Tomazin, she managed to create a system uh, where the healthcare professionals can submit their own projects and ideas. Uh, and we can consider if these projects can be developed and uh, involve maybe any other healthcare. So, so we uh, have also the opportunity uh, to create some small groups uh, 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 either co uh, involving our health cares that are attending uh, masters or that are attending universities. So we managed to create uh, some uh, uh, groups uh, that uh, can um, eventually develop these projects. Uh, but the focus is uh, to uh, not keep uh, the projects on the paper, but to transform them in clinical practice. So we go, we are going in this direction, absolutely. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's a good direction. And, and as you saw by my presentation, uh, our healthcare professionals uh, are very focused on this uh, yeah. direction as well. Hopefully I answered because I have some problems I can hear that well, the, the question, sorry. Fantastic, Rosanna. It strikes me that what you've done is here to stay and that, uh, you know, the COVID pandemic just helped it all to make it work. So it wasn't going to stand in your way by the sound of it. So thank you so much and uh, really appreciate all that you're doing. Look forward to touching Thank base you. with you again soon. And Debbie and Elizabeth, so my thing, my question was around retention. I, I mean, it's a really hard one, isn't it? But have have you measured any anything or had any plans to in terms of whether what you're doing is helping to keep your nurses with you for longer as with as part of this program? Yeah, that, that's a really interesting point. I think we will do. Um, I think when we get to the end of the 12 months, which will be June, July time, um, we can certainly look at that. Our cohort has been very small um, yeah. in terms of, of Bradford. I know um, Elizabeth's got 10 students and we're obviously looking to grow that for the next cohort. Um, I think it has it has shown its worth because we started off with um, 17 learners that were very passive who would, would sit there and not speak very much. And now they're absolutely engaged. You know, they've written research, qualitative research proposals. Um, they're gonna be presenting them to us tomorrow. They're gonna to be presenting conference style posters in June. Um, it's just amazing to see them flourish. It's, it's just been, like I said in the chat, it's probably been the most um, joyous thing I've ever been involved with in terms of my nursing career, just, just watching the progression of these learners throughout the, the fellowship. Um, so certainly from Bradford's perspective, we will offer it as a post preceptorship offer now, which hopefully will help with our recruitment and retention um, and, and build those numbers up. Well, I mean, why wouldn't you want to come and work there as a newly qualified, you know, never mind what you've got, but surely attracting others would be another 
would be another win, I would imagine. Aisha, is your hand up? Yeah, just two points and actually well one point and then it was just picking up on what Debbie and you were just saying so because this is why we we do need to work together because this point about why wouldn't you work at, in at Bradford because that's offering you this amazing opportunity if that's the first time they hear about that type of thing it might sound a bit alien but if we're already doing this work in the universities and working with our local boards or trusts then it becomes they're looking for you they're looking for you offering this um so that was the first thing which i i, I mean i think it's great what you're doing there but someone in the chat actually asked a question and i answered it not with the response but i noticed it then disappeared so um it was i didn't want that person to think it wasn't answered so it was a question about how many of the projects are aligning to i think it's the governments or the policies of the the bigger picture you know the the they're aligning to national strategy or policies um I, think and I, I just answered that that was a really good question um, and a really good point to make um but I, I don't know if anybody wants to answer that well i mean one of the things for me and you know uh, lord chris was absolutely instrumental in all of this and for sure absolutely wouldn't be doing it without his global approach to health and his passion and his drive to, to, to start this off and he always said to aisha and i uh, you know it's really important that you don't tell people what to do that you don't show them what to do that actually you support them and enable them to develop programs that are relevant to their country to their needs to their population so some so some people will have developed programs that are very aligned to the national agenda and some will be very locally focused and actually you know i think the ingredients that have led to the success is because of that because we didn't want to uh, sort of tell people what they should be doing, um, but wanted just to create some principles. So um, I think, to be honest, it will vary. But but my thing is, and I know it will be yours as well, as a collective, if we can get to 100,000, you know, I mean, my, my desire is that we get to 100,000 early career nurses and midwives networked through amazing managers, leaders, educationalists, researchers, academics like yourself. What a force for that then is to pitch up to and to influence um, serious decision makers to the policy makers to front up, you know, to the WHO, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I, I think that we really would get that global influ influence when we actually build that capacity and capability. But look how we've mobilized today from different parts of the world and told a hugely powerful story. Uh, and we've done that without, um, you know, huge problems. Imagine amplifying that again and again and again around some serious um, issues that we want to we want to drive forward in the future. And, and, and I think that's where we're heading, uh, you know, to be a force to be reckoned with and, and, a, and a source of support for the next generation to, you know, to really be able to influence positively the care that they deliver. So that, that's where we are on that one. I've also just got one more question that's popped in. And it's from somebody called Meredith, who has said, um, bravo, thank you, Meredith, um, to us all. Um, how about emergency nurse association at the local to global level? Um, count on me, please. So thanks, Meredith. We absolutely will do. And, um, and then an anonymous attendee has asked, how is the nurse, how, is, how are we NNC monitoring the longer term impact of these programmes? While well, our impact guru sits with Aisha up in my left Thank God, because she's the one that is the real expert around this. I mean, I think, you know, we've talked a lot, Aisha, haven't we, with the nursing now, you know, about how do you measure impact? How do you measure outcome? What about input? And, and we're certainly on the journey that. But for me, it's not just about the numbers. It's about the storytelling. It's about the coming together. It's about the soft benefits of having a community that generally is aligned to the same goals. And I think our impact is by continuing to be live, by having contemporary issues on the table, by continuing to recruit and learn from and with each other. So, so that's where I, I see the impact being at the moment. And, and you know, when, when people turn around and say, I don't want to join this community because there's nothing in it for me, or we've exhausted all of the knowledge exchange, you know, we've done this and we start repeating ourselves. 
then I guess it will be the time to question whether we're making a difference or not. But my feeling is that we've got a long way to go, actually. We've got a lot to do together and we're a source of support for each other. I mean, it really does make my day to spend time, you know, working on this because it's just so enlightening. So, I, you know, I think that's where I am on impact. I don't know, Aisha, do you want to add anything? Um, I, I think you're really right. And I think we did, we, we, well, there, was a lot of, there was a lot of discussion about that with the campaign, the Nursing Now campaign, which kind of was an evolution and a social movement in the end. Um, but I think probably there are people who do want to evaluate. And I think impact is something we see at the very end of a journey, um, you know, and can be 10 years, 20 years. And I think that's that's useful to understand, you know, outcomes, outputs and impact. But I think what is key is try and understand what matters to your organization or your group or the students or your employer, have that conversation, find out what matters to you and probably just collaborate with maybe with a, a university or collaborate with other people and look at there are frameworks out there and if you really want to get really into it you can have a logic model theory of change um, I'm doing that with a group at the moment but it doesn't need to be like that stories are hugely impactful ask people what their story was what was the difference they made what was the difference let's hear the story from the patients the families from the service um, providers i mean you can you can do that quite easily with very little resource because i know a lot of organizations and people don't have time to put in these big evaluations and sometimes they they don't really work that well so um <laughs> they cause more problems you've by the time you've set it all up everything's over so um you know just try try and make it understand what's meaningful and you know collect some of that data if you need support and help contact the nursing now challenge they can put you in touch with different people there are resources out there there are people who would be able to help you but um yeah it is something that we are mindful of and i mean i think as lisa said there's a there's a long way to go but an important point made yeah Great. Well, I think on that note, uh, it's been, uh, as ever, wonderful to spend this time with you, inspiring to hear about the work that you've been doing. And uh, I cannot tell you, you know, how much joy it brings me to be able to support this and serve this community. And, you know, long may it continue. And huge thanks to you all. And I hope the rest of your day is as much fun, if perhaps not more, if that's possible. Take care, everybody, and keep connected. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Bye.